welcome back to Not Quite Dead Hi-Fi. Today's episode centered around a Sony ES series power amplifier. Uh, one of Sony's premier products, definitely something that's worth keeping out of the grave. Before we get too involved in this episode, a word of caution. Anytime you're working on a high powered amplifier like this, um, never ever connect speakers uh, to the output until you've had a chance to first take a look inside, plug it in and make sure there's no catastrophic failure. If you were to hook speakers up to this and turn it on and there was a problem, you could blow your speakers up in a matter of seconds. So always be careful. And as always, make sure you download the service manual, owner's manuals and documentation before you start working on a product like this. So with power up, one channel was not working. And in fact, the protection circuit had cut on for safety. Doing some measurements, indeed there was DC voltage present on one output. Good thing we didn't hook speakers up. If you look at the schematic, you can see the output transistors, and that's where the voltage is measured. Uh, we had about four volts there. Um, if we'd hooked up speakers, it would have been catastrophic. So looking at the schematic, this is a very simple amplifier. Uh, we have an STK series device here that has most of the preamp functions, and then we have driver transistors, output transistors, and a bias transistor. Probing the circuit, and what's really nice when you've got a stereo device that has one channel working and one channel not working is you can compare the two. So looking at the, the, the two channels, I discovered that the bias voltage was missing for the, the defective channel. Um, using this test device, this will test transistors, resistors, capacitors, all kinds of electronic devices. I was able to determine that the output transistors, the driver transistors, the bias transistor are all working fine. So the problem must be earlier on in the signal path. Using the test meter, I was able to trace back to this uh, STK series part. And if you look at the, the schematic here, um, you can see there's two output pins, 10 and 11, that have no voltage on them. Um, I think that's probably what the problem is, is this STK series part. Um, like most modern amplifiers, this amplifier is direct coupled meaning there's no capacitors in the signal path. That means that the bias for the first or the, the next stage is provided by the output of the previous one. So I'm guessing that because these SDK devices have no output on them uh, for this defective channel, that's what's causing the bias to be missing on the output stage. So these SDK devices were made by Sanyo, which I find kind of weird when you're talking about a high-end audio product like this, because they're kind of a lo-fi component. Um, but they were pretty much at all Japanese amplifiers, receivers made back in the 70s and 80s because they were cheap and they made the design very simple. Um, finding replacements for these is challenging. Uh, they haven't been made in probably 20 years and most of the ones you're going to find on eBay online are actually fakes. Uh, there's a lot of money to be made fixing these old amplifiers and it doesn't surprise me that people try to make, will make fake versions of this. I was lucky and I found a seller who had inherited an old uh, stereo repair business and I was able to buy two of these. I'm pretty sure these aren't fakes. So the new part's already installed, you can see it here. Um, pretty easy, just a matter of a few screws and this circuit board came out. Um, I like to use a vacuum desoldering tool on integrated circuits like this, larger devices, just makes the less chance of damaging the circuit board. Um, the part's installed. And I'm gonna cut ahead a little bit here and tell you that that was the problem. Uh, the amplifier now works good as new. We rescued it from an early grave. So now we've got this guy working. The last thing we need to do is set the output bias. Um, very important to do in a power amplifier. If the bias is too high, you're gonna dissipate heat for no reason at all. If the bias is too low, then the amplifier may have distortion uh, when you're listening to music. So I'm going to hook up these test probes here to the, the test points inside and uh, we'll be right back. This is the importance of getting the service manual ahead of time. It's going to tell you how to make this bias adjustment. Um, in the case of the Sony here, the manual says to wait 10 minutes for it to warm up and then set the bias voltage to 7 millivolts at those test points. So I've got the meter hooked up. Um, we'll go ahead and set the bias. So this you can see the test meters hooked up to these test points. Uh, this is the adjustment for the bias. Right now we're at 5.2 millivolts. I'm going to turn this until it says 7. 6.9. You 
don't have to be perfect. Uh, as long as you get it somewhere around 7.1, 7.2, somewhere around there. 7.6, a little high still. Close enough. Okay, we're ready to go. So once again, I can't emphasize how important it is when you're working on any high powered amplifier to check that bias setting before you hook up speakers and try to use it. Uh, again, very bad things can happen if that bias is completely out of whack. In this case, we've got it set. We're right around our seven millivolts. I've hooked up some speakers and I have to say, this sounds really, really nice. Um, definitely a vintage piece that was worth saving from the grave. So another successful rescue. We've kept this guy, he was near death and we've brought him back to life. For more information on this amplifier, you can visit our website, notquitedeadhifi.com. Again, by clicking the link in the video or the link on the page underneath where you're watching this. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day and we'll see you later.